one of the greatest Portland Trailblazers of all time, he won his championship in his beloved Houston with the Rockets, a dream teamer, et cetera, et cetera. Two-time Basketball Hall of Fame inductee and commissioner of the Big Three, Claude Drexler. Good to see you, Claude. Delighted to be here, Rich. Com- do, do I call you commissioner? I you can that? call me Clyde, uh, okay, the commissioner or whatever. <laughs> commissioner Drexler, how does that sound? How does that sound to you? Sounds great. It sounds great. The Big Three is a phenomenal league, and uh, I'm delighted to be the new commissioner. There you go. Yeah. So Cube asked you to be commissioner. Jeff Quatnitz asked you to be commissioner. What was, what's the first thing you did as commissioner? Well, the first thing I did was to, to figure out what, what I need to do. Okay. <laughs> right. You know, th- with the startup league, there are a lot of things th- that's going on at all times. And mm-hmm. uh, these guys are tremendously uh, innovative. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Quantnitz and uh, Ice Cube, mm-hmm. they're there every day working in the office like you and I. And, uh, I, I, you know, that's, to me, that was a motivator. These guys are really concerned about the league. The big three, it's, it's passion. Mm-hmm. They live it. They love it. They work it. They breathe it. Mm-hmm. And as a result, many players get to participate and continue on with their dreams. The fans love it. Mm-hmm. Every city we go to, they're like rock stars. And you got all these stars and, and, and legendary coaches, guys like Julius Irvin, George Gervin, Gary Payton, uh, and Rick Barry. And, and then you got some of these incredible players that everyone knew from the NBA. Guys like Kenyon Martin, Al Harrington, uh, AI, uh, Allen Iverson. I mean, Catino C- Mobley, Corey Maggette. The list goes on and on. There's just so many stars in our league. Yeah, and Corey Maggette's coach is going to be joining us later on, Nancy Lieberman. You're, yeah. the, old, you're the former coach, right? You're, Absolutely. You, you stepped up from power to the uh, – to the front office the and front Nancy Lieberman's here, here in hour number two. So um, let, let's talk about uh, the Houston Rockets right now, which is where the big three is going to start the season, June 22nd. It could possibly be right after a parade in that town. What, Absolutely. So my question for you is what, what do you think is uh, keeps up D'Antoni at night before these playoffs begin this weekend? The Clark. pressure, the pressure. When you've had the best record, in the regular season, by far. Uh, you've been stellar. Offensively, we know you can score. Mm-hmm. You've proven you can defend. But you haven't done it well enough through the years to win the title. Chris Paul has been a great player, perhaps the best point guard of his generation. But he hasn't had a title to prove it. He hasn't even made a conference finals in his Exactly. Career. James Harden has been an MVP caliber player the last four or five years. He needs a title to confirm it. Mike D'Antoni, many 60-win teams in Phoenix – Never a title to show that I'm really good. Mm-hmm. And so those three guys are highly motivated and they're hungry for a title. As opposed to the Warriors or the Cavaliers who have titles, it's just regular business playing in May and June for them. I think the Rockets have an edge because they're hungrier. Because they've not had it, I guess Harden. How has he changed in the last couple of years, well, Claude? James has changed. He's become more of a leader. He's always been a phenomenal basketball player. And, and that's undisputed. But I think he's matured as a player. He's a little bit older, and that happens. <laughs> and uh, James has always been a great teammate. Uh, if you're open, he'll pass you the ball. He does – plays good defense. He, he's become – with his running mate, Chris Paul, I think they, they have the best chemistry I've seen in a long time. Well, I guess the, the scuttlebutt, one would say, is that when push comes to shove, second season comes as has now arrived, that the Rockets do not have defensively, certainly with the coach – the horses to take down any anybody who matches up with them in a half court game what do you say to that well they have to prove that i think they've proven that throughout the regular season Mm because teams have tried everything doubling tripling james and chris leaving other guys open uh giving them taking away the three-point shots giving them mid-range they've got an answer for all of that now the key is can you do it on demand in the postseason i think they can which is the team you think they can give in the most fits obviously is the Warriors Golden, is it the Warriors well what if it, what if Curry's not there the Warriors still they still have a star-studded team they're they're they have a cohesive unit they're well coached uh, these guys know what to do they got a lot of veterans on their team uh, guys who know their roles and are happy with their roles that's why they're so good Clyde Drexler here on the Rich Eisen show I've got Damian Lillard coming up next after you and I uh, have a nice chat here um, do you think he's taking the mantle from you Absolutely. Uh, I think Damien's one of the best pure points in the game. He can score. He can pass. He's a leader. He shows up every night. He's embraced that role. 
and I love watching him play. And super nice guy. So why not them then? Why not them this year? Well, I, I think they're lacking one or two pieces. You know, if, if they can fill those one or two voids on their team, and I don't want to call them out, but I think they're, they're, they've done extremely well. 49 wins in the regular season. Sure. That's good. But, but you know, to, most of the champions are in the 50, 60 win category. So, are we, so we are in the era of the super team. If you don't have it, you don't have a shot. So what you're basically saying? Well, well right I don't now? know. You're only as good as you play. They have, they have superstars. That backcourt of Lillard and McCollum mm -hmm. are really good. But the big guys have got to come through. Their front court is not exactly scaring anyone. Mm -hmm. uh, although uh, Nurkic is playing pretty well. Clyde Drexler uh, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's. Uh, what was the dream team practices like? Nobody dream ever. You you couldn't get in there, right? The the Magic Jordan scrimmages. They the, were the phenomenal one, to watch. Yeah. What, what, watch you weren't you weren't in them. Well, I was in them, but not really because I what had I had a bad knee. Okay. And I was just trying to survive the experience of playing in the Olympics. I needed surgery on my right leg, so I wasn't really trying to get in any scraps. But what happened? Magic and Michael were talking and yucking it up. And, and you know, Magic will get Michael all hyped up. And guess who's got to guard him? <laughs> you. With a bad knee. Yeah, exactly. So right. I was like, hey, cut it out. Just cut it out. Well, what is Magic saying to Michael Jordan? Oh, they're just having fun. Great guys. I know that. But what, what, how would he get Jordan's well, goat? you know, trash talking at the highest level is really good. I mean, those guys can get under each other's skin like never before. Highest level. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> that's like rare. That, I mean, we're, we're in a different atmosphere at that, at that level. Exactly. So what, can you give me a little bit of an example? Well, Rich, I could. But I don't want to, you know, confidence you know, you don't want to. Just like Fight Club? Absolutely. You know, you, it's what happens in the gym stays in the gym. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you get competitive guys of any, any sport together and they're practicing, even though they're on the same team, yeah. when they're practicing, they're going to go hard. Bird. And, and Bird well, Bird was kind of like me. He had kind of a bad uh, uh, twitch in his back, and he was trying to survive the experience as well. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of laid back. <laughs> what was Charles's role in this whole thing? Oh. <laughs> I don't know if he had one, but he was talking somewhere. <laughs> hmm. This, I mean, it. This is always stuff that I cannot believe actually did happen. We're also showing a shot of Leitner on the screen right now. Were you guys surprised it was him, not Shaq? Well, being added uh, to the team. You know, we. You know, sometimes uh, people ask, "What was the criterion for making that team?" Uh, the criterion changed from from person to person. But I think the guys who were involved were just trying to put together the best team that they thought was the best fit. Mm -hmm. And so Shaq was probably the most dominant player. Leitner was probably the best winner at that time in college basketball. Right. So you couldn't go wrong. And while we're on the subject of college basketball, you know, I, I wanted to ask you about this. Clyde Drexler here on the Rich Eisen Show. Every year we see uh, at the ESPYs, you know, Jimmy V, Jim Valvano, and then they will always show the moment that he's running on the court looking for someone to hug. Can't believe that. NC State just pulled off the greatest upset of all time. You were on the opposite end of that. What is that like for you to relive that almost all the time? Well, you don't relive it because that's one game out of like two, 3,000 games that you played. Mm -hmm. That was an important game. And, of course, you like to win. And so you're, you're, you're disappointed. But you got to understand, uh, from my standpoint, we, you know, we played hard with the best team in college basketball. Uh, North Carolina State was a very good team. People don't realize – they beat four or five good teams before they beat us the exact same way. Coming from behind, mm -hmm. guys had to miss free throws in order for them to even have a chance to win the game. And so I'll take that every time, really. Sure. But give them credit. They were able to do it. Jim Valvano, uh, if he didn't win that game, we would never know who he was. <laughs> or his cancer research would never be as great as it has been. So there's a reason why things happen, Rich. What was the, what was the first time you met Hakeem? First time I met Hakeem, he came in. He was Hakeem, right? Hakeem. A K E E M. Okay. okay, he was Hakeem at the and, time. And you know, the H was silent, so he probably said Hakeem, but nobody really heard it. <laughs> right. So we you know just a lot of ignorance on our part, mm -hmm. basically. And so uh, he was the nicest guy ever. He came in from Nigeria, and um, Coach Lewis, Guy Lewis, who's our head coach, mm -hmm. he was uh, he was one of those coaches who thought if you were a big guy, six ten or over, he could teach you how to play in the post. And luckily, Hakeem went to that coach. Had he gone to a guard-oriented coach, mm -hmm. it might have been a different story. Think about it. Because even though he was 6'10", he was probably 195, and he had good legs because he played soccer. 
but his basketball skills, you know, were, were not there at that time. When was the first time you dunked a basketball? Do you remember that? Oh, Rich, you know, I dunked the basketball probably in the ninth grade, and and I think I celebrated for like a week. <laughs> Which, what was it? Was just a regular dunk, two hand windmill? What'd you do? It was a rub in, probably with a volleyball, because <laughs> you, <laughs> you couldn't palm it. You know? <laughs> and then you celebrated for, Cel- for, for two like weeks. a week. Because you- then, you know, it's promising. You know, wow, I'm going to continue to grow, right. hopefully, and I know I'm going to be able to do more in the future. So it was that realization that. If you practice and if you continue to grow, good things is going to happen. Yeah, and then Houston this year uh, had a tournament win for the first time since Phi Slamma Jamma. Yeah, Did that was good to that? see. That was good to see. Yeah, I know. Could've good had... for the program. Good for the city. Yeah, that kid Gray. Uh, he could play. Don't you think? I think he's a pro. Next level, right? Don't yeah. you think he's going to play at the next level? I, I, I think he has a shot. Okay. Because on that next level, everyone's big, mm-hmm. quick, fast. They're experienced. And those jobs are hard to get. If you were playing Clyde Drexler here on the Rich Eisen Show, if you were playing now, would you be one and done? Would you have been one and done at Houston? Uh, that's hard to say. I mean, think about it. When we were coming out, guys like Magic Johnson, Isaiah Thomas, they were one and two and done. It happened, James Worthy, Michael Jordan, Hakeem and I, we were three and done. But could we have gone a couple of years earlier? I'm sure. You sure? I'm sure. Yeah, because we were looking at your draft beforehand, the uh-huh. number of juniors and seniors. <laughs> They were all, right? Seven of the top ten were seniors. Seniors. Wow. And then three juniors. Well, back then, you had to be exceptional to go early. Mm-hmm. You had to prove yourself because you couldn't just come out of high school and say, I want to go. Mm-hmm. You had to have some stats to back it up. And so the scouts were more concerned with what have you done? What are your credentials? About, now, yeah. a lot of it is based on potential. I'd like to take a break, spend a little bit more time with you, uh, talk some big three basketball with you and LeBron. Your two cents on what LeBron's doing right now and whether you think he's the MVP having seen Harden up close as you have. Okay, yeah. That's what we call a tease here. Uh, Clyde Drexler, the uh, big three commissioner, live here on the Rich Eisen Show. Damian Lillard, who's, as I said, trying to take this man's mantle uh, <laughs> as one of the greatest Portland Trailblazers of all time. He'll be joining us at the top of hour two here on the Rich Eisen Show. Our poll question today is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. The road ahead is bound to take some unexpected turns. Farmers Insurance can help you understand your coverage options with our practical knowledge gained from more than 90 years of experience. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Find an agent at Farmers.com. Ask the poll question of uh, Clyde Drexler, Basketball Hall of Famer, two times over, and Big Three Commissioner Chris Brockman. Clyde, which three or four seed in the NBA playoffs has the best chance to win the title? Sixers, Cavs, Blazers, Thunder. I'm gonna go. I, I, I'm gonna go on, uh, on LeBron theory. His his record is impeccable. I think they're gonna be the best fourth seed ever. <laughs> so you like what? What? What do you think about what he has been able to do, Clyde? I well, mean, when you were 33, put I guess put yourself where you were feeling, and I don't even know if you could you say you had as much mileage on you as LeBron has on him right now well well, how many eight nba finals i think i had only gone to like four three or four Mm -hmm. but but you know the fact that he does it every year he stays healthy the guys probably i have so much respect for him he's the greatest player of his generation and he doesn't get enough credit in my opinion he's a consummate team player if you're open he'll pass it even though you know he he commands the ball but he's so good you got to give him the ball i love him I, I think LeBron has, um, you know, been so good for the game of basketball, the sport, and he's been a great uh, icon for the sport. When did you first meet him? I think his rookie year. Uh, just incredible body, incredible game, and uh, the fact that he was so ahead of the game mentally for his age. Well, you know he's got a big decision coming up, and of some of the more wild rumors is that he would go to Houston. What do you think about that possibility? Well, with Clark? Chris Paul and James Harden and, and you got LeBron, it's kind of tantamount to what the Warriors did. And Steph Curry, Clay well, Thompson. It's that you, we, we just decided, look, again, Damian Lillard's coming up. Mm-hmm. He's as talented as they possibly can come. He I can agree. take Dame time, right? Lillard time, whatever you want to call it. It's hap- it happens in the fourth quarter. He takes games over. He has that ability. But you, you said he's a couple of pieces shy. Because he's got a he's got a super team in in Golden State, and and Daryl Morey, the general manager in Houston, has flat out admitted 
that he it's an arms race is basically what he's called it. Well, he called it an Paul. arms race, which is a brilliant statement. But it's always been a race about who can get the most talent. And it's been that way for many years. This is not the first year that that's happened. You think about the old Celtics and the old Laker teams. They had four or five Hall of Famers on the same team. But they were able to draft most of them, right? I yeah. I mean, I guess acquire. They acquired quite Kareem. a few. Right. Right. Michael Thompson, McAdoo, and, and the Celtics acquired guys like Dennis Johnson, Robert Parrish. Uh, but for the most part, if you can get a bunch of guys who are really talented playing in their prime together, mm -hmm. you're going to have a super team. And those are traditionally the teams that have won the championship. So do you think that's a possibility, knowing this team, knowing the guys on it, knowing the coach, knowing the system, if LeBron raised his hand? And I, I don't know why he would want to leave the Eastern Conference. Um, but if he'd said, you know what, I want to win a ring, I, I, I want to win one with Chris Paul, do you think it would work? I think any team that got LeBron James would be much better. I mean, he could go to Portland and make them a contender. He goes to Houston, they become the the super team uh, favorite every year. And so LeBron is a difference maker. And it's hard to, you know, if the Lakers got him, they'd be a contender. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Wherever he, the king goes, they're going to be really good. If you were commissioner of the NBA, what would, the, what would you do? Clyde? Uh, in, in terms of LeBron? No, no, no. Just if, if you had made it make, well, you, you say you're still trying to figure out the big three, what you're going to do. Oh, no, the big three is awesome. It's a machine. Right. We've got a great think tank. we got Amy Trask. She's the chairman of our board. Yeah, you got Cube, uh, too. Cube, Quantnets. I mean, all these guys, uh, phenomenal. Right. Phenomenal think tank. Uh, and so uh, when, when you see the draft yesterday, how did that go? Did you did you read off some of the names yourself, Clyde? I did, uh, and the draft elevated the big three. I mean, competition. Uh, these guys are – every team now mm -hmm. is stacked. There are no yummy bears. I mean, when you play every week, you're going to play a tough team. There are no yummy bears. No yummy bears. <laughs> yeah, I could see the number one the number one uh, pick last night, Andre Owens, guard. Birdman is in this. That's going to be a lot of fun. He's the great he's on, addition. He's on power right now. He was chosen fourth overall. Quentin Richardson, Q in yep. the mix. Absolutely. He was a second-round pick. Yep. Well, this is great. En I, enjoy I, being the commissioner. I, it's been a lot of fun. We got a lot of work to do, but our fans are, are 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 looking forward to the second season. Yes, as we are, and our players. It you know the first season was a banner year, and the second second season, everyone now knows what to expect. They're getting more familiar with the names of the team. Mm -hmm. There are only eight teams, and we only play for ten weeks in the summer. Right, and so guys look forward to it. You don't want to miss it. June it's, June twenty second in Houston, absolutely, is going to be the first spot, and you check it out uh, online to go see uh, when they're going to be coming through uh, to a spot near you and get your tickets. I went with my kids last year; it was great. Thank you. It was I'm really glad good. You oh, of course, come on, that was fantastic. <laughs> so Des Bryant has been released. Ooh. He has. Are you a what, what's your what's your NFL team, Clyde? The Texans. The Texans. <laughs> Deshaun Watson, have you have you met that young man? Met him. He goes to a lot of Rockets games, and he's okay. a stud. We got to get him healthy. Got to get JJ healthy. Right. And let me tell you something, it could be on. Right. So you're you're Texan guy, but the uh, the news out of Dallas, Des Bryant has been released, and according to the reports, they didn't even offer him a a, a haircut, huh? Yeah, Ian Rappaport <laughs> saying did not offer a pay cut. Simply released him. No post wow. June first designation. Wow. Clean start for Dallas and Des. Darn. Wow, that is big news. I did, I did not see that one coming. Also really reported uh, as he was leaving the building, said, I'll see these guys twice this year. The Giants? <laughs> would they really put him on the other side of Odell Beckham? Eagles have no cap space, so it's either Washington or the Giants. Washington. That would be interesting. How about that? Well... <laughs> that would be really something. Hey, Clyde, uh, congrats again on being named the commissioner of the Big Three. They're, you're, you're awesome, and I'm a big fan of yours, and I appreciate you coming in. Thank you, Rich. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. And I wish you continued success. Thank you. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern, on Audience.